Hey climbers, Chris here from Bartlett Arborist Supply. Thanks for checking out this YouTube video here. Make sure you go to bartlettman.com. Lots and lots of gear on the website. Get all your needs there. Today we are on a how to climb with the basics. Moving rope system, double rope system, access this cherry tree, start to finish. Let's go. <laughs> So, starting right off, basic monkey's fist or throwing knot. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of weight to toss this rope up into the canopy. Finish this off with a girth hitch. That gives us a nice little throwing weight there. So in this cherry tree behind us, we have almost world branching structure where we have one group of limbs, two, three, and then the rest of the canopy up above. So what we're going to try and do is get this rope in above at least the second group. So anytime you're throwing the rope up into the canopy of a tree, if you just access the first limb or the lowest limb, you only can get to that point and then you have to try and climb up around and above it. And that could be a super, super hard struggle. So anytime you're trying to access, go for the limb above where you hope to get your body so you can stand up, get secured into the tree, and continue your advancement. So we got a couple options here. I see a nice one that'll get me into this second group of limbs here. So I'm gonna try and estimate that throw at about 30, 35 feet. So I'm gonna take this rope and coil it and guesstimate the amount of rope I need to get there, which I'm gonna think is about seven of these short coils. And when you go to throw this type, or this rope, if you leave the weight below the bottom of your loops, when you actually toss the rope into the air, it won't get tangled. If the weight is up here and you throw and some of these loops wrap around it, what you'll end up doing is just tying all the rope together. So you want to try and leave that weight a little bit below those loops that you just made. Multiple ways to throw this. So if I was throwing at you, you could throw like this should be kind of like a granny shot with the throw line. You can do the old hook throw, hook shot, toss up, or you can do the more of like the powerhouse move, which would be to stand, if I'm throwing into this cherry like I'm about to, I'm gonna use both hands, and here we go. score. Got it right up there. Now we'll manipulate the rope a little bit to get it back down to us and then of course we'll have to isolate. Throwing the loops at the limb can consist of some big droopy pieces like this and you want to try and create this rolling loop as it goes up the tree. So if you were to throw with your right hand at the tree, that would send a big chunk of slack up and it would walk to the left. If you were to grab it with this hand and throw this way, it throws a loop up into the tree and walks it to the right. So if you got it over your limb, if you got that rope over your limb or around the section that you wanted, but it was a little far away, you could walk it back to the spar of the tree by throwing it this way or walk it out by throwing it this way. So let's get some big loops up there. Let's get this line down to us. I'm pulling a huge section here and I'm going to use my entire body to try and toss this slack up to that line. Get some big movement out of this rope, get it to drop five, ten feet at a time. Good drops. Now, another way we can do this too is if we have a whole bunch of slack down on one side and maybe we don't want to try and throw loops, it's getting caught into some branches, 
You can kind of always do this motion, which will throw a chunk of slack up just as much. Um, the only thing is, is you have to really whip the line up to get this motion correctly, but it does work out pretty decently. So rope is around the limb that we want. Now we got to isolate. So I'm going to pull down plenty of slack here so I can get the rope around the spar. We never want to climb off of just a limb. We don't know if that limb is going to have any structural integrity or not. So we always isolate the spar. So this next group of limbs here, maybe 20 feet off the ground, I'm going to grab three poles here. And this one I'm just going to do the hook shot because it's nice and easy. And I missed. All right, climbers, these next couple tips are going to save you some time and energy. Instead of untying this, we're actually going to pull the other end of our rope up and we're going to use that to tie into our saddle and ascend up the tree. The reason behind this is while ascending the tree, if we happen to need to do some work on the way up or potentially descend back out of the tree, we're going to have a tie-in ready to go but we're not going to waste the time tying another throwing knot or a monkey's fist into the end of our rope once we actually reach in our point where we need to access a higher tie-in. This is going to just really save us some time, a little bit of energy up there. And here's the other one. So tying a clove hitch onto our bridge as opposed to a bowline with a Yosemite tie-off. This is a very nice way to lock off your rope, but let's say I didn't pull enough or I need a little bit more rope, you can easily pull a little more slack with this clove hitch and relock and be good to go. So now we're going with our Blakes. Shoot. So you got to give myself just a little bit more. There we go. Figure eight. Blakes. And now normally because I have this giant splice here, I wouldn't tie a stop or not because it would be almost impossible to pull that out. We'll put a figure eight in there anyways. We're going to load test this. Feels good. All right. Up the tree we go. As we approach our first toss location, I've been scoping out the next throw on my way up as I've been hunching up here. And this tree has great limb structure. It's gonna allow us to get right up in here 
a nice little gentle toss. So now we have our limb, our final tie-in in mind. I'm gonna pull up that monkey's fist, throwing knot. We're gonna access this last piece here. Hundred and fifty foot of rope, a little bit to pull. All right. So same principle. I'm gonna leave the throwing knot or the monkey's fist a little bit below our loops. And for this toss, I'm gonna do that hook shot. I have a nice wide open throw from right here. And we got her. Now we're cooking. There we go. Untying our throwing knot or monkey's fist. Comes out nice and easy. Now we're gonna pull quite a bit of rope and we're gonna do the exact same thing as what we did on the ground. We'll slide our other system out of the way. I'm pulling another clove hitch here. believe that should be enough. And now copy the exact same thing. Figure eight. Shorten this up just a little bit. There we go. Lakes. Roll some of that slack out. And a stop or not. Good to climb on, holding weight. Now we can get rid of our other system, which was basically just an access to the ground in case we needed it or something to work off of on our way up. From here on out, we can start to do our arborist prune, get rid of some of this deadwood that's up in this cherry. Made it down to one of these limbs and I wanted to discuss with you just a little bit of easy tips to get out and get back efficiently. My most commonly used practice is to leave all my weight in my rope while I'm heading out on a limb. And especially if you have this beautiful tie-in angle where we're pretty much straight up and down off of it, you could do a simple full weight of the rope and kick out and pretty much make it the whole way out. If you're already at a little bit of an angle, however, need to make sure that your Blake's hitch with, is within reach. And you could simply stretch over and see if you could still reach it as you go out. In this case, it's in a great position. If not, here's where that clove hitch comes into play. We can actually shorten this up and give ourselves a little bit tighter hitch to arm ratio. So that way when we're running out, we don't have to completely lanyard in, retie our system 
in order to do this limb walk. So fully weighting the rope, easiest way is basically just to pull yourself out with your hands. In this manner, you're probably only hanging on to about 25% of your body weight. If you were to plant your feet and move your hands out, this is a very acceptable manner. And then that way you can use your feet to step on any little branching nubs, rough textured bark in order to get out. Or if you're starting from underneath and having to walk up, you tighten up a little bit. Get up on this limb and then grabbing up above your rope to kind of pull you up and reach over and that'll kind of give you that stability where you don't have anything to hang on to. This little bit of rope will kind of pull you and allow you to be able to be able to be on your toes in order to get out here a little more efficiently. And we can go all the way out here if necessary. Using these little bit of branching structures to kind of wedge our feet into and hold us out. That way we're not overloading a limb, pushing straight down on it. We have a ton of tension in the rope because we're squeezing the limb together as opposed to just bending it down. We're pressing the limb together by pushing our feet down the limb structure, keeping our weight here. On our way back, try and execute the same thing. Get your foot in a limb structure and we're gonna pull, push, just little bits at a time. Work it nice and easy. We got nice little branching structures here to keep our feet, keep the tension in our rope on the way back. And we're back to a safe point. I hope there's been some really good tips on here that are gonna help progress you a little bit more when you're out there in the field working. Make sure you guys are being safe out there. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check out the other content on the YouTube channel, bartleman.com. All the gear is here. Thanks guys, climb on.